Ra Hogan for the Boxing Voice. I'm delighted to be here with Essex finest Harvey Horn. How are you, Harvey? I'm good, mate. I'm good. Yourself? Fantastic. Better than you, as we were just saying. Wasserman <laughs> here have put on a great spread for us in your fight week, making weight. Must be horrible watching us all stop all this delicious food. It's enough to make you want to change promotion. <laughs> Now, not for us as media guys, we love coming to these events, yeah, they, they really take care of us. I mean, talking of taking care of you, uh, how long have you been with Wasserman? Um, they've been great, they've been great. I mean, my last fight uh, was a bit of a stinker, as I'm sure you know, um, uh, on a Wasserman, like obviously a Wasserman bill. wasn't a great fight, I mean, I can make excuses when I'm blue in the face, but it's just one of them things. A bit bad luck, a bit, um, just a bit of ego as well, I think, taking a fight that maybe I should have been a couple of fights down the line, rather. Um, but yeah, at the minute I'm feeling great, feeling great. I mean, I've got a little, last little bit of weight to lose. I mean, first time I've actually got to make weight properly, so I'm starving, if I'm honest. But um, I'm looking forward to it, I'm dying to get back in, dying to get back in. Just on that fight with Majiha, as you said, uh, it was clearly quite a jump. What was the line of thinking there? Because the warning signs were there. You look at the guys that have beaten us, but they've been top level guys. So. 100%. So he'd, he'd been in with some right good fellas. Um, so what had happened was he was my fifth replacement. He was the only one that we could get last minute. I was supposed to fight the French champion, then I had the South American jump in, and another South American, and it just sort of went. By the time we had about two weeks to go, and my little brother was making his debut on the on the bill as well. And if if the fight gets pulled, it was it would the show would have fell apart. It would I was the only one I think it was for a belt. It was supposed to be for a belt. So and I think a bit of ego. I hadn't been beat on English soil in about 12 years. So it was one of them things where. I thought, I see him, I knew he'd beat and I thought, oh, I could beat him. I knew he'd box a weight a lot higher than me before. And I'd, again, I just thought I could beat, I thought I'd beat anyone. I thought I'd beat anyone. And um, when we, had, I'll be honest, at the weigh-in, when I see him, I thought, he don't look that big. I thought, he don't look that big. And we agreed to catch weight. And I thought, nah, he don't look that big. I was talking myself into it. And then um, on the day of the fight, Fucking massive. He was like, I looked, took, I looked opposite him. His arms are massive. But if you actually watch the fight for three rounds, I was boxing lovely. It's boxing really nice. But again, it's one of them things where the geezer it so. I mean, he caught me right. He burst my eardrum. Or well, burst two. I like got a small burst on the right and a, a big one on the left. And after that, it was the first time I've ever been, I've ever felt something like that in my whole career. I've never been, never been, been like that. And um, I think he, even then, he was saying, "Oh, if I could have carried on boxing, I was boxing for the first few rounds. Maybe I could have pulled it off." But I think it was one of them. It was a bit inevitable when I'm fighting ten rounds against an heavy, heavy hitter. Um, if he didn't catch me then, he might have caught me in the fifth or the sixth. It was just too much weight, you know. Like it was too much of a jump. And I mean, even though we weighed kind of the same, that it was just too much of a jump. Me, I walk around that flight. So it was just one of them things. A bit of ego, lesson learned. Lesson learned in an odd, embarrassing way, but it's a lesson learned. Yeah, I think serious fans nowadays, the whole obsession around unbeaten records is probably waning. But just on that matter of the size, I've, I've asked a couple of coaches and fighters about this. Uh, yeah, you are, Chris. And, uh, a lot of them. Um, um, Sorry, look, I'm just <laughs> Make sure I get my right side. Uh, yeah, I mean, especially in these lighter weight classes, some of these, some parts of the world, Asia, Latin America, probably Africa, these guys boil off insane amounts of weight. We've seen recently with uh, Paul Butler's fight with Casemiro. Yeah. Casemiro actually weren't allowed to fight in the end because he was trying to sauna it off, which means that's probably normal for them. These guys are probably like, Coming down from wealth, right? yeah, they're, they're big. For, they're big. This is what I mean. This is the advantage I've been giving away a, a lot of the time over my career. Um, where I'm a natural flyaway, I walk around at the weight. Ideally, light fly would be perfect because then I'd, I'd be doing what the other boys are doing. I'd be boiling down, getting down. I'd be huge because I'm a big flyaway anyway, size-wise. But when it comes to that bit of bit of power, you know, like that bit of it. It's, there's always been a few questions around my career. Can I hit that hard? And I know I hit hard. I know I, my, my record doesn't. My record doesn't show it. Um, the fights I've had 
necessarily doesn't show it. But again, when you're in journeyman, are walking around at lightweight, fighting lightweight, and you're hitting them, it's what damage am I going to do, really? Like, it doesn't really make sense, does it? So it'd be interesting to see when I actually get in with someone who's a flyweight, which like this fella is. This fella I've got is a flyweight. Mm -hmm. So it'd be interesting to see uh, if I can dig or not, if I can dig. But I'm confident in my punching power. It was more the fact it was that strength, strength, yeah. But yeah, it is what it is, like I said, lesson learned. I mean, even if the punching power isn't Julian Jackson levels, I mean, you've got a great amateur pedigree, you've got the boxing, but when I asked Sonny uh, Edwards about it, he said, as you know, Sonny's not really a puncher at the top level. He said, actually, skills are more important. They definitely are. They definitely are. I, I totally agree. Not just because I'm, I, I classify myself as a skillful boxer anyway, but it is definitely it is definitely a bigger... I'd rather have the skills and have that one-punch power and rely on just clipping someone. Rely on just clipping someone. Um, and I think it will show over the length of my career. You know, like the, the, as the levels go up, uh, the skills and uh, the skills will... Um, Will, play, will come into play rather than that one punch but one punch bangers I mean unless you're a devastating puncher you only go so far you only go so far and that's my opinion that's my opinion um, so yeah I think that um, and especially as I'm maturing I mean I'm a late bloomer I'm a very late bloomer I've only just got a beard in the last year I mean I'll, if you can call this a beard but I've only just started growing a facial hair like last year so it's one of them things where my dad was a late bloomer I'm sure I'm a late bloomer so well, I'm hoping I am anyway <laughs> That's the case. You'll find your testosterone levels will probably be rocketing any day soon. Yeah, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully. Um, I mean, is the problem also for for Brits at your weight class? There's not many Brits who are flyweights. No, nah. most Brits nah. are typically middleweight size. Yeah, average size. Is that a problem? Because then you do have to keep getting fighters from that those parts of the world where everyone's that size, and then makes it that much harder. No, definitely. Of course, it makes it harder to match. Definitely harder to, especially in Britain. I mean, but I'm hoping now that that stigma, you know, the unbeaten record, once that goes, once that goes, look, so, I mean, look, cocktails flying everywhere. Oh, mate. Um, yeah, once, so I forgot where I was going. Let's say. <laughs> So with the um, with that unbeaten record, that stigma, once that's gone, I mean, don't get me wrong, I, I, I would have loved me unbeaten, I would have loved to have kept it, but it's that Mayweather thing, everyone wants an undefeated record, and it's just not realistic in this day and age, you know, like, and that's why a lot of the best don't fight the best, and it happens domestically as well, that's why some of the domestic fights that should happen don't happen, because everyone's worried about keeping that unbeaten record, but... As you know, a lot of people, especially around my way, have started losing that O. We've got a couple of the fighters, like the ones that are domestically, uh, in my opinion, level, like a decent level, are uh, getting beat. You've got the Mephosas have been beat now. You've got Tommy Frank, British star, he's been beat now. So, hopefully, they start being made. What, what sort of fight would you like? I mean, looking at the British fights, there's hardly any of There's about a dozen. Max. Max. Would you like to go for, say, the English? I want the British. I want the British. I'm dying to get over the British. Like next? Well, this one's a, this one's a six, or I think it's a six rounder. And I think I need, I'll be honest, I'd, I'd like, I would jump into a 10 straight away after this. The 12, I haven't done a 12 yet. I ain't done a 12 yet. Confident that I'll do a 12. It's just, but again, it's different. So I'd like to get at least another 10 under me belt before I go for the British. Because I can sit here and shout, yeah, I want Tommy, I want Tommy Farrell. And, uh, but again, I'm, I'm coming off the back of a loss. I'm not really in a position to be talking a load of shit. So, I'll be honest, get this one out of the way. Hopefully do a, do a demolition job on him, or at least a fucking boxing masterclass. Um, and then go for, go for a 10 next. Go for a 10. And then see where we go from there. Yeah, you've come off a loss, but... Tommy's coming off a draw with a journeyman. Yes, yeah. And uh, I think two fights ago he lost. But like, Gwinnaris isn't a journeyman, so it's actually yeah. a good fringe world operator. Um, it, it, the way he struggled in recent fights, does that give you extra confidence? It gives you confidence, of course it does. But again, I'm not going to draw on too much confidence just because if you were to look at my last performance, you think, oh, he goes over. You think, oh, if I, I click him, he's going to go. I'm a tough. <laughs> Without blowing too much smoke, I'm a tough, tough bastard. Even though I'm, I'm small, um, but I, I'm very tough. And for me to, for something like that to happen, it's never happened in my whole career. I was, I, something weren't right. And I, you could tell after, I had been like, once I had to go through loads of stuff to get my license back, like go through GPs, get, make sure the ear was okay. It was a bad, bad injury. And don't get me wrong, he clipped me bang on, clipped me bang on, brilliant shot. 
And, um, and it, but again, even that, I was up. I was up. I wasn't down. Yeah, he didn't knock me out. I was. I was up. Whether I could have carried on or not was a different story. <laughs> but I was. Um, I'm, I'm a tough kid. I'm a tough, tough kid. So um, to draw on confidence off of these two losses would be would be a bit silly of me. I'm, I'm going to be confident just on my own skill set and the fact that I think stylistically I beat him. But to draw off his last few performances, I think would be a little bit naive of me, just because of my situation. What about uh, Kyle Yusuf? Um, I don't know what's happened to him. He's English champion still, is he? according to the, the board's website at least. I don't know how readily they update that, but yeah, he's not been active for a while. No, no, so there was a big thing, there was a thing he was supposed to be fighting Tommy Frank for the British originally before that Duranos deal happened, before he, he lost to the Mexican. So he was supposed to be fighting Carl Yusuf, and I was supposed to be fighting the winner. But it all sort of fell apart, and I, I'll be honest, I've seen Carl Yusuf, and he looks massive, and for a flyaway, whether, I think that was probably the part of the act. I don't think he can make that way. Just on how big he is. It's huge. I mean, I'm a big flyaway, and I'm sure he's about five, I feel he's about two, three inches taller than me. So, whether he, that's probably why he's been inactive. So, I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure about him. But. How do you assess the UK scene then? Uh, obviously, Sunny Edwards is quite at the top. Uh, I think after that, the next bash of the year, yourself and Julie are all pretty much close to each other. We are. I think so. I think so. I mean, yeah, again, I'm not in a position to talk shit. Sonny's he's doing what he's doing, isn't he? He's out of the way. He's out of the way. We've all got to clean up ourselves, I think, now, before we can start, so we'll always start giving it. Um, or, so I think you've got the likes of me, Tommy Frank, Mafosa, there's a few floating around. I mean, I mean that journeyman that beat him, well, journeyman record, is supposed to be quite tough. So I'm not too sure. I think we've all got to clean up amongst ourselves before we start before we start looking at world honours and even European honours. I think we need to start cleaning up domestically. Mm-hmm. And on the world scene, I mean, there's some killers there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, who, who, I worry about them when I get there. Yeah. Who do you think's the best flyweight in the world? I'll be honest. I'll, Flyaway, you got to go with Martinez, isn't it? But well, after seeing what Chocolatito done to him, I couldn't believe it. I mean, I know how good Gonzalez is, but it's just an unbelievable performance, wasn't it? It's so good. But that's super fly. That's, a, that's one above, ain't it? Hopefully, Gonzalez can't make flyaway. But yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he can't. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully. God, if not, yeah. But. I think he's got to be up there, and he? he's got to be up there. I'll be honest. I don't wait. The, I, I don't wait. The um, I mean, there's a the Japanese blog, and Nakatani's quite good. He's good. Um, I don't think the Ukrainians that uh, the uh, Delakian. I, like I, I don't think he's. Um, I'll be honest. I don't think he's very special at all. He's managed to claw onto that belt for dear life, just fighting in his own country, and he? he don't come out. He don't come out of there. But that one's there for the taking. If he was ever to fight anyone, I mean, I'd be confident fighting for that now. But I think um, domestically, uh, world level, Martinez probably up there. Really. You think he'd beat Sonny? Star wise, I'll be Sonny's honest. Star, he's, he's, a night, he's a nightmare for anyone. He's a nightmare for anyone, Sonny. Isn't he? I mean, he's got an awkward, awkward style. And for someone like Martinez, I think um, I don't know, it's just a case of whether he clips him. Isn't it? I think it's case, I think if he clips him, he goes. He goes. He's a big, big puncher. Um, you've seen Sonny go down over le- lesser punches. Martinez is a bit of a different animal like that. But if it kick on his toes, like he did against that uh, South African geezer, again, different animal. But if he could keep, keep on his toes dancing around, he got a half decent chance, I think. He got a half decent chance. I wouldn't be surprised, put it that way. I wouldn't be surprised. I'd back Martinez, but I would not be surprised if ever was done. Well, let's hope those fights can be made. Uh, Sonny's always giving... He's vocal enough, isn't he? Yeah, yeah he's giving <laughs> everyone's needle. Everyone needle. Yeah. Incidentally, I mean, have you sparred with any of these guys? I mean, a lot of the learning I know is done in the gym. Yeah. But you get prepped for that level. Are you getting top quality sparring? I'll be honest, at the, uh, at the minute, I get a lot of... Um, to find people my way, we tend to do a lot of amateurs, which is, as any pro will tell you, it's a bit of, bit of a nightmare. Because they're fast, they're so fast. They throw a million punches around. Um, but again, it's ideal for me. If you get, if you get two or three of them, you jump them in and out. It's always great sparring. They're not great for the rounds, as in they, they, they can't do no more than three or four. But they're very fast, very sharp. They are a nightmare. They've always got something to prove. Yeah, it's always got something. To prove. They always want to bash a pro up, don't they? So, um, but yeah, as for top quality sparring, I haven't had top level professional sparring in a while. I mean. I think the last top pro I sparred was Dennis McCann back in January. 
but when it comes to the bigger fights, so like the ten rounds and things like that, that would, we'd just pull them in. We'd pull them in, or we'd visit, or we'd go, we'd go. Um, because again, you can't you can't be fighting top level that's sparring top level. But yeah, as for sparring, no, there isn't much about. You can imagine we always give away a lot of weight, but it's what it is, isn't it? Uh, for Friday, uh, who is your opponent? I've got a Spanish fella. I've got a Spanish fella. I'm not too sure. I haven't really had a look at him. Uh, my trainer's had a look at him. Um, small fella, small fella. Um, I haven't had a look at him. To be honest, I haven't had a look at him. I'm just kind of, I've been focusing on myself. I mean, you hear it a lot, don't you? But I'm focusing, on, I'm focusing on myself. I know what I bring to the table, so better go in there. And just um, comes a bit of ag. Comes a bit of ag. All right. We'll look forward to it. Um, anything you want to add? Hello? Anything you want to add? Not really, no, I ain't really got too much, no. Um, thanks to my sponsors, obviously. Thank uh -huh. you, my sponsors. PSD Scout Holding Designs, Old Tezza, and uh, White Skips, Massive Elves, as always, especially seeing as I haven't been in the ring for the last six months. So and You're able to box full time because of it? I'm able to box full time. I actually do have a job, though. I do have a job. I work um, in boxing, I work in boxing, funny enough. I have, uh, work in a boxing gym in Mayfair. I work down there. Mayfair? Yeah, well, yeah, well, well posh. I end, I end, yeah. But you being an Essex boy, you don't like right, right right for it. I stand out like a sore farm down there. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so, yeah, that's about it, mate. All right, well, Harvey, it's been a pleasure. Yeah. Look forward to uh, seeing you progress, and hopefully, uh, maybe uh, in a while, you'll be bringing some titles back to Epping. Such word. <laughs> so, thank you very much. Thank Thanks, you. Harvey. Cheers, mate. Yo, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to hit the like, subscribe, and share. As always, if you want to support us to the next level, head over to the Patreon dot com backslash the boxing voice we have tons of exclusive from border wars and title betting shows the list goes on and on and on but in addition to that if you guys have questions for fighters trainers and promoters this is where you can submit them we will run out get these questions answered and put it back on the show just for you guys appreciate it peace